Yeah. All right, so we're gonna start now. Everyone's ready. Anyone wanna create happiness today? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wanna thank you all for being here. It means a lot. I mean, I understand that 90% of you wanna be asleep. Half of you are still eating your meals, and the rest of you have calls or meetings or work that you have to get to. So, um, I really wanna thank you guys for being here. It's really incredible. I mean, the fact that you guys are here instead of sleeping or working or eating really shows that you know you care about yourself and your life and you really wanna increase the quality of your life. So, you know, I just wanna acknowledge you for you know actually taking the time and coming here and, and doing something for yourself. Because, you know, so often we get caught up in the grind and we keep moving and we forget to take care of ourselves and our depression's at an all time high. I'm glad you guys are here. And so, uh, because you guys are here, uh, I have something for you. So, uh, I have this uh, money back guarantee going on. <laughs> if you're not happy by the end of this, but no, in all honesty, um, you being here for you know the next 43, 44, 45 minutes or so, I, I promise you that um, your life will become substantially different after this. Um, you know, I, I imagine a few weeks from now, You'll be, you know, somewhere in Peru or in Chile, <laughs> um, and you'll be going to a WeWork or a, a communal, and you'll just have this big, giant smile on your face. And at first, you won't know why, and you'll think, and you'll think, and you'll remember. It's because you put these strategies, strategies in place that you learned today, and you created that level of happiness in your life that you always wanted. All right, so why are we doing this? Um, so this is a meme that's been very popular. It goes around a lot. Uh, it says, when I was five years old, my mom always told me that happiness was the key to life. And so when I went to school one day, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, happy. And they said, you don't understand uh, the assignment. And I told them, you don't understand life. And it's so true. You know, we go through life and, you know, we look for, you know, starting a new business or getting a new job, making more money. So what? So we could buy a house or buy a, uh, I don't know if anyone's asked, race for a plane or a boat. Um, or look for the perfect relationship. And why are we doing these things? To make us happy. What if we could just make ourselves happy and make that pursuit of those things way easier? I'll tell you a story about this. <laughs> so, uh, not too long ago, in, um, in November of last year, about nine months ago, I was sitting in my apartment. Um, I was sitting in my apartment at my desk, looking at my computer, and I have this uh, Microsoft Word document open, and um, I'm trying to come up with you know some new strategy for my business, and I'm looking at the computer, and you know I just feel so um, immobile. I, I, there's just, like, I can't do anything. And I'm getting really, really frustrated. You see, um, in November, my, my uh, long-term girlfriend, the girl that I you know, loved for six years of my entire life, she was living with another guy, and I was crushed. And in that same time frame, my business was starting to fail. You know, I, I, was, I was losing my business, I wasn't growing at all, and I was in risk of losing my business in uh, six months. And so, um, and in addition, I was, I was living in an apartment with four of my best friends and I never felt less connected to them. So I've been lonelier than ever in my life. And you know, all this stuff was just you know, coming in and, and really weighing me down. So I'm sitting here and uh, there's only one thing left for me to do. So I get up, I walk over to um, the carpet, I just lay down and I curl up in this ball. Because the pain is so much that there's nothing left to do. And so thankfully, the next day, I was actually going to this, the, this seminar, this Tony Robbins seminar. And um, I pick myself up off the ground, and it's like the hardest thing I do. I go to the seminar, and I'm so thankful that I went. I walk in, I don't know if you guys know Tony Robbins, but Tony Robbins is this big, massive guy. He talks like this, I walk in, and he says, Everyone has an emotional home. And emotional home is the emotion that you go to when there's nothing there, when you're bored, 
when you have nothing going on. What is that emotion? And I'm saying that I know right away. My emotional home is depression. Whenever there's nothing there for me to feel, I go to depression. So it's when he says, it's okay. You can change it. You just have to do these three things. And so the first thing he does is he asks us, write down your thought on life. What is your emotional home? So I wrote down on my paper, uh, life is painful and meaningless. So I'd like to invite all of you here to write down what your thought on life, some, some emotion of life that you'd like to change. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't have to be that depressing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if your life is incredible, no, it doesn't. But if there's any emotion in life, if there's any sort of stress or anxiety you have or lack of self-confidence or insecurity, this is something that you can write down and, and we can attack it right now. You have one, Eric? I got one. Okay, cool. All right, so now that you have it written down, the next thing you do is I'd like you to write down a better thought, a better emotion. So actually when I did this exercise, and I, and I looked down and I saw life was painful and meaningless, I thought for a while, and I thought I came up with the perfect response. <laughs> what I wrote down was, life is orgasmic joy, and, and I was so proud of myself. <laughs> so please, I invite you to, to write down something that we love to think. Life is a dance. Life is um, happiness. Life is worry and stress free and anything that you know will put you in a better place. Alright, so intentionally this exercise is supposed to be written on a piece of paper and I apologize for uh, not saying that in the beginning. But we can still do it. So if you have a piece of paper, if you have a phone, if you have it in your mind, um, the next step is, I need you to cross out the limiting belief. Like really, in your mind, destroy it. On your phone, erase it. On your paper, write over it. And we, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then the last step, what you're really supposed to do is you're supposed to yell this new phrase out. Now I'm not gonna make you guys yell this phrase out, but um, if you really believe it, and you practice it, and you think about it every day, you wake up and you say, hey, life is not painful and meaningless, that's bullshit. Life is orgasmic joy. Over time, it really becomes the truth. All right. So why me? Why am I here today to teach you about creating happiness? So I'd like to share with you another story that you know a lot of you may have heard, but you know, hopefully it's still good. So um, I just got back from spending five weeks in Croatia. If you don't know what Croatia looks like, this is a picture. I mean, look how gorgeous this is. Croatia is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And so um, after spending five weeks in Croatia, I'm in an Uber on the way to the airport. You know, everyone has said their goodbyes, people are crying, um, everyone's upset, nobody, nobody wants to go home. And I'm in this Uber on my way to the airport, and I get a call, it's from my mom. I say, hey mom, how's it going? And she's like, hey, it's great. And um, I'm like, it's so interesting, everybody is like, crushed and crying and tearing. And I'm pretty excited. My mom's like, hmm. Aren't you even a little bit sad? You just spent the most amazing five weeks of your life in a beautiful city. Um, you got a new mentor for your business. You got a new opportunity for your career. Um, you um, met many incredible people. You learned so much. And I thought about it. And I was like, yeah, that is pretty great. It was probably the best five weeks I've ever spent in my entire life. But you know what? I know the next five weeks of my life are gonna be just as incredible because I, I use the strategies that I'm gonna teach you here today. So before I start, um, you know, this is something that I've been working on for a long time. 
I've been thinking about happiness for you know about a year now, and I love spreading it. And so in that time, I've come up with something very cheesy. It's called uh, Harrison's Hierarchy of Happiness. And so what Harrison's Hierarchy of Happiness is, these are basically the five buckets you need to fill in order to have the maximum amount of happiness in your life. And so the first bucket down here, preservation or preservation. These are basically your survival needs. <laughs> and um, what this is, is these are needs. So if you don't fulfill these, you'll never be able to create any extra happiness. These are things like safety and security and, and sleep and nutrition. If you don't eat, you can't be happy. And then these middle ones, peace, purpose, and progress. This is where we're gonna focus our attention today because these are the ones that actually create that real underlying sense of happiness where you wake up with a smile, you go to bed with a smile, and you never think about um, any sort of <clears throat> suicide. And then the top, this is your pleasure. These are like material pleasures, like the boat, the, the plane, the car. So these things actually add to your happiness, which is fascinating, but only if you make your way up. And they're very short term, they add a tiny bit, but it's like the cherry on top of a sunglass. So that's the first one we're gonna talk about is pleasure. It's the easiest one to talk about. So I would like you guys to imagine. Imagine um, <coughs> when you woke up this morning, maybe waking up another day after a full night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you wake up, you get ready, you start heading to WeWork or your job or wherever um, your career is. And on the way, you're walking, some guy or some girl comes up to you, and she hands you a $100 bill, or a 100,000 pesos. <laughs> she hands you this bill. Would you guys be happy? Like, would, would that make you smile? Hell yeah, of course. $300, why would that not make you smile? But the problem with this is, let's say later that day, you have that $100 in your pocket, you go to the WeWork, and all of a sudden, shit goes wrong. You get fired. Your, your business goes under, uh, your partner breaks up, with you. you're, you're in trouble losing your house. And so all this stuff is coming in on you. And you leave WeWork or your office, you start heading home, and that same person comes back. You're like, hey, here's another 100. Is that gonna make you smile? Is that gonna create happiness? Not a chance, there's just no way. So that's the problem with pleasure. Pleasure can add to your top of your happiness only if you're already happy. But if the, all, the other, um, all the other buckets in the pyramid, the levels in the pyramid are empty, it's not going to do anything. Which is the, the biggest problem with our society today is we chase pleasure to create happiness when we actually need to chase happiness to create pleasure. So now we'll go to the bottom. So preservation. These are your, your survival needs. And I like to share you a story about the important. So this is an awesome sign that I found in Croatia. Like I had a sound photo. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> it's really true. If you ever want to eat healthier, just think about how whatever you're going to eat is going to make you feel. And you'll start making better decisions because nobody wants to feel like crap, right? Everyone wants to feel good. So good food is good food. But, and that's why we need to fill this bucket first. Because until we're fed, until we're hydrated, until we're rested, until we're safe, our minds can't even grasp the concept of happiness. So taking care of your survival needs comes first. What's great is if you take care of these needs, it makes it possible to create the happiness that we're talking about today. So in order to do that, uh, every single one of you has a roof over your head. Every single one of you feels safe 99% of the time. Those aren't things that we really need to address. What we need to address are nutrition and sleep. So about the survival bucket is that everyone here eats enough to survive. And so you don't need to eat like this to be able to create happiness. But we're not about just creating happiness. We want to maximize the happiness. So, in order to maximize your nutrition, 95% of the world is chronically dehydrated, which is an epidemic greater than anything else. Good job. And it's the easiest thing to fix. All you need to do 
one glass of water every two hours, set a timer, drink the glass, and you will feel incredible. Food is a little bit more complicated, but I wanted to make it super, super, super simple. 90% of your serotonin, which is your feel-good hormone, it, it gives you a smile. It's produced in your gut. And how do you make your gut happy? You feed the bacteria in the gut. And what they eat is fiber. So women, this is uh, Mu Harris, need uh, 25 grams of fiber per day. And the average woman eats about 10 to 15 grams. So there's 10 grams of fiber that we need to make up. And, and men are even worse. We need 38 grams of fiber in a day. But what's amazing, if you hit your fiber goals, you're eating good food, you'll hit your micronutrient needs, you'll hit your macronutrient needs, and you'll really maximize the system. And then the next thing you need to eat is protein. About 40% of us don't get enough protein, and protein is the only macronutrient that's essential. And so, um, you need between uh, 0.4 and one gram of protein for every pound in your body, and in kilograms, that's there. And then sleep is this other part of um, the survival bucket that we can maximize. So people who sleep under seven hours a night are five times more likely to be depressed. So if you just sleep over that seven hours, you're destroying your chance of depression by 80%. And they're 20 times more likely to survive from anxiety disorders. And so, Eight and a half hours is the sweet spot for sleep. It maximizes your performance and makes you feel incredible. So one last thing about the survivor bucket. Not everything in there is immediate, right? When you're hungry, you need to eat or else. When you're thirsty, you need to drink or else. You don't technically need to move, right? But in order to survive, movement is essential. 10 minutes a day, completely covered. Right. So now let's talk about why we're really here. How do we actually create that happiness every single day of our lives? And this is filling up the peace of mind bucket. So I have another story that I'd like to share with you guys. Um, I was at the seminar on public speaking, and the leader of the seminar was fascinated with butterflies. You see, butterflies, they have these gorgeous, these beautiful, beautiful wings, as you can see. But what's interesting about butterflies is that that butterfly right there, you can't see. No butterfly understands how beautiful their wings are. Every other butterfly can see it, except for the butterfly. And so, um, you know, during the seminar, um, I really wanted to master this. I really wanted to get it. I thought it was so important. I was putting so much pressure on myself, so much stress. I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I was practicing, practicing, practicing. And so, near the last day, I was kind of feeling, you know, not so great. You know, I put all this stress, all this pressure, and I wasn't performing as I should, and so I was in this bad mood. And so the seminar leader, he gets us to do this exercise. So he, he brings out these pieces of paper with these empty butterfly wings and we each tape them to our back. And so he, he, he gets up and he says, um, the point of this exercise is, since you can't see your own greatness, everyone is gonna go around and write your greatness on your wings so that you have it. And so I'm so excited, I'm in this terrible mood, I'm gonna go around, all these people are gonna say all these great things about me, it's totally gonna knock me out of this mood. And, uh, so we started the exercise and I'm running around and I'm running around and I'm writing all these things and I'm writing all these things because I know the more people I write on, the more will write on me. And the more that I get written on, the greater I know that I'll be. So I'm running and I'm writing and I'm running and I'm writing. And, uh, and, and, and the, the leader gets up on stage, he says, okay everybody, it's over, uh, the exercise is done, uh, you guys can go to lunch. And I'm like, no, no. You see, so what happens was, it wasn't about seeing my greatness. It was about giving people compliments and contributing to other people's lives that put me in this such incredible mood that I didn't want the exercise to end. In fact, I haven't even looked at my wings because the exercise wasn't about me. 
It was about contributing to all the other people. So with that, we have the first tool, the number one tool that I use to create happiness. Every morning, I take a time round, and for two minutes, I write a message to one of my loved ones, telling them how amazing they are, how grateful for them I am in their life, and all the things that they have done for me. And that really sets my day off right. <coughs> So this is Buddha, um, and so I have a story about the Okay, I'm not going to tell you, but um, I'm going to tell you my favorite quote. My favorite quote is, it's not happy people that are grateful, it's grateful people that are happy, and that is so true. People think that, oh, once I'm happy, then I'll be grateful for the happiness. But the real key, the secret to creating happiness is to be grateful for with what you have, and that will make you happy. So another activity that I do, this one I do at night before I go to bed. So in the evening, I take two minutes and I write in my journal all the things I'm grateful for. But what do I write? Is there a system? Is there a secret? there's something specific that you know creates the maximum amount of happiness? <coughs> I'm glad you asked. There is. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so the first thing that you write, um, you want to be grateful for what you have. And there's reasons for this. Um, if anyone's ever heard of Maslow, he has his own uh, pyramid. I mean, he stole it from me, obviously. But <laughs> he has a period, pyramid of needs that you know, this exercise of gratitude helps you fulfill. So grateful for what you have, the people in your life, the connection, once you appreciate and are grateful for the people in your life, you feel that need for connection that every human being has, and the things you own, right? If you're chasing cars and boats and money and fame and, and success, if you're grateful for it, it lasts six times as long. Totally made it up. Um, Number two, what you've done. You put in so much effort. You worked so hard to create what you're doing. Be grateful for it, acknowledge it. Otherwise, you're just on a hamster wheel for no reason. And then, and your contributions. I know so many of you in here are such good people, such good souls. Be grateful that you're someone who can contribute. Because not everyone can. And then lastly, who you are. You guys are all unique, you're special. You're amazing. Be grateful for that. And you guys have all been on a journey. And on that journey, you've changed, you've evolved, you've created characteristics that you didn't have. And a lot of times when we grow, we forget where we came from. And then we're still like, shoot, I need more. And when you're <coughs> grateful for who you've become, that journey becomes that much better. So the next thing that I would like to share, it's, it's a new thought. So this is a picture of some stars and uh, some other funky space stuff. And um, there's a theory, and it's by a man named Shrikumar Rao. And Shrikumar Rao, he runs this institute that's dedicated to happiness. He's an absolute genius when it comes to creating happiness. And he has this theory, it's called the Benevolent Universe Theory. And what he believes, and what he has proven through research is that when you submit to the benevolent universe theory, you become luckier and happier. And so in order to do that, um, it's very simple, it's three steps, that's it. So step number one, um, you have to admit that the universe is a sentient being, it's alive, it's awake and it knows you exist. And once you believe that the universe knows you exist, you need to believe that the universe is not working against you, it's working for you. Everything you need, the universe will fulfill. Any struggle or challenge the universe gives you is a blessing, it's a gift, it's an opportunity to grow in a way that you needed to grow. And then next, um, we have a concept, it's by a man named Vishen Lakiani, 
and Vision is an incredible, incredible. He runs, you know, you know, hundred million dollar businesses just on on personal development. And so, what Vision has created, he created a concept. It's called, it's called Lisciplin. And um, so, in order to explain about what Lisciplin is, I'd love to share with you a story um, from when I was sitting in a seminar from a guy, <coughs> Gilan. I don't know his last name. <laughs> so Gilan is this is this monk, and he goes around and he teaches people uh, meditation. It's really interesting. I've never seen this before. He gets out on this giant stage. He walks out on the stage. He looks around. And he sits down, and takes his shoes off, <laughs> crosses his legs. So he's sitting there like this, and um, he's this he's this white guy from England. And he's dressed all in in monk robes. He decided to. You know, say you know to help with the material world and become a monk. And so you know, he started on this journey to become a monk because he was really impressed. He learned about meditation and how it you know makes you happy. And you know, in in his journey, he, he really started to struggle. What he noticed was that whenever he felt down, he thought that he needed to feel up. And so whenever he felt down, he would meditate. Meditation creates happiness, right? We talked about it. Right? Um, but what he realized is that every time he thought that he needed to meditate, he was telling himself that he's not actually happy and that he needs something to make him happy. And so what he discovered is that if he just told himself that he is happy and he allowed the downs to be the downs and he didn't make a big deal about it, um, that he ended up telling himself he was happy. He started to get happier and happier and happier. And now he's a famous monk that travels around the world teaching people how to become happy. So the key to discipline is, is you need to get rid of that addiction to a high. Get rid of that addiction to, to needing a smile. When you're down, it's okay. It happens. But just understand, most of the time, you're a very happy person. And so this creates a state of underlying happiness, which is just such a beautiful thing to, to sit down and not have to smile, but just understand that life is orgasmic joy. So now I'd like to share with you something um, that this baby knows that you don't know. So if you can see, this baby has a giant smile on, on his face. And it, it's because he submits to the uh, thinking of Thomas Edison. So Thomas Edison, um, you know, most of you know, he's this really famous inventor. But actually, what he thought was fascinating is what a lot of you people in this room don't think is fascinating, sleep. And so he's fascinated by sleep, and actually, he used sleep for so much in his life. All of his inventions came from when he was sleeping. But what he did before he went to bed every night, um, before he went to bed every night, he would ask himself a question. Because he believed that when you sleep, your brain works in overdrive. Your body goes to sleep, but your brain has excess energy to work. And he thought that it was a sin to never ask yourself a question. And so what I do is I took that and I changed it for happiness. So every night before I go to bed, I lay in bed, I write down three to five things that I'm excited about tomorrow. And I write them down and I go to bed and when I wake up, I wake up excited. I have so much to be excited for. My brain, for the past eight hours, has just been thinking about how amazing the day is. And so I wake up, I know that the day is. So this is another tool. So you write three to five things you're excited about. You let those things be ingrained in your mind while you sleep. And then you wake up excited for your day. It's pretty easy. So now we're going to the third bucket. This is your purpose, and we have another activity. So what is the meaning of life? Well, you have to create it. And so I have an activity to help you guys create it. So um, I was actually just listening to a video. Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking, and he said the number one rule for success is have a vision. Without a vision, you could have the nicest plane, the best pilot, but you'll never go where you're wanting to go because you don't know where you're going. Um, so I invite you all to um, 
write down one big, hairy, audacious goal that you can have. Whether you wanna lose 50 pounds, or you wanna double the size of your business, or you want to pursue that PhD, or you wanna to travel to 100 countries in the next two years. I'd like you guys to write that, that, that uh, goal down. Why? Not why is this your goal? Why do you want it? What is it about this goal that you want? What, how will it, uh, this is also an exercise that I would like you guys to write down under your goal. How will it make you feel when you achieve that goal? Imagine you've already achieved it. What do you feel like? Um, what will it give you? Who will you be able to inspire? I know a lot of the time, um, you know, when I'm sitting at my desk and, and I'm tired of you know, applying to all these different speaking opportunities, I realize that I have four of my best friends back home and they need an inspiration. And me getting out on that stage shows them that they can get out on that stage if they want to. And so that pushes me when I lose motivation. So who can you help? You know, if, you're, if your goal is help, um, you know, maybe you could play with your nieces, your nephews, your kids more. If your goal is business success, maybe you can contribute to charity. Um, you know, maybe you can help your family. And who will be proud? I mean, I know I think of my parents all the time when I'm working and making them proud. Okay. Now, so we have your survival needs taken care of. We've created your peace of mind. Uh, we've given you purpose and we've attached you to the purpose. It's time to fill that last bucket. And this is a bucket that was created by Aristotle. And so Aristotle had this theory that um, one of the most important pieces of your happiness is being in a state called flow. So the state of flow, it's when you're doing something you absolutely love and time seems to just stop. So have you ever been skiing down a mountain or just dancing at a nightclub? I don't know if you guys do that. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, or, or just attacking some piece of your, your work that you just love, absolutely must. So Aristotle had this theory that the amount of flow in your life you have directly correlated with the amount of happiness you have in your life. And so the last bucket is called progress. So flow is part of progress, but also progress more importantly. If you have a goal and you're not going towards that, how do you feel? <coughs> if you have something that you need to do and you're not doing it, how does that make you feel? Unhappy. Which is why progress is so important. So how do you fill this bucket? Not so hard. Um, in order to progress, you need to know where you're going. That's why we created that vision. So if you remember that vision, remember your purpose, you can start progressing towards it. So this is another activity. I know I'm, I'm putting you through the works and you haven't slept, but I promise you, this is for you guys. So take out your pen, your phone, your laptop, your brain computing system. And uh, now that you have your purpose, um, I want you guys to take two minutes, two minutes and write down every single activity you can think of that'll help you get closer to that, that purpose. And when I say every single one, I mean there are no bad ideas in a brainstorm. If you want to lose 50 pounds and you think that, oh, if I don't eat for a year, That'll get me. That's true. Write that down. Write every single thing down. I promise. 
it'll work out. Could be that phone call that you need to make, that person you need to speak with, that email you need to respond to, anything. Maybe it's watching TV for five minutes less a day. Maybe it's reading 10 pages in your book. five of those activities and schedule them. What are the five most important ones? The five that are actually going to definitely make you go towards your goal and the five that you actually want to do and schedule them. Put a deadline. Just circle them and know that those are the ones you're going to do. sat here for 40 minutes, you had a lot of information told to you, what now? How are you going to remember this? How are you going to put this into your life? What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to sum up here today what I talked about, and I'm going to help you guys make sure that this does make an impact on your life, that this changes, things are actually different. You actually create a higher level of happiness every day for the rest of your life. So to sum it up, here are the four thoughts you need to have to fill up the five buckets. The universe works for you. Appreciate your struggles as gifts. Practice bliss, discipline. End the addiction to your highs and live in abundance knowing that we're hardwired for happiness and we're all happy. Trade expectations for appreciation. Generally, it's our expectations that destroys our happiness. And instead, if we just appreciated everything, we'd be happy. And then return to your new emotional home, the one you created. Life is orgasmic joy. I return to that anytime I need to. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, okay, so the exercise. This is what I do every single day. So I take eight minutes to focus on my happiness, that's it. Four minutes in the morning, I do a two minute appreciation to, to someone that I know and I love. And, and people like, they love to receive it. It is like the greatest gift to give someone, but it's not even about them, it's about me. It's about how incredible I feel when I send that message. And picture your why, and create three activities for the day that'll move you closer. It'll fill your bucket of purpose and of progress. And then I take four minutes in the evening, that is it. I end the day with two minutes of gratitude. And then before I go to bed, I write down three to five things that I'm excited about for the next time. And so now we're gonna go through one last exercise and this is what is gonna make sure that this changes your life. So actually, I'm gonna be the first speaker you'll ever hear to tell you to pull out your phone. Please, pull out your phone. Here <laughs> you go, that's good. So pull out your phone, and I want you to, on your phone, write down three things that you're gonna implement in your life. Three things, what did you take away from this? What is interesting? What can create that happiness?
It's an appreciation. It's a gratitude. It is acknowledging that the universe is working for you. It's trading expectations for appreciation. <coughs> and now, the hardest part. Gert, where are you going? Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. All right. <laughs> the hardest part of this entire presentation. I need you to send that to someone. Someone that matters. A friend. A coworker. A sibling. A loved one. A family member. And this isn't to spread it. This is, I mean, it's great to, to, to help someone else in your life create more happiness. Um, but this is for you. When you send when you send something, an intention, to someone else, you create an accountability. Muchas gracias. Buenos tardes. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are